Everyone, we're going to come in here today and we're going to show you a real quick tutorial that can get you making a game using GameFruit very quickly. So once you come out to GameFruit.com, you can make an account and log in. Click Make Games and it's going to bring you to a starting point where you can have four templates to begin with. And if you're really looking for some additional information, there are a number of video tutorials and they even provide one of them right here in the startup window. We're going to go ahead and click Blank Game. And right off the bat in here, we could start to see that we have access to our canvas and our, our layers and our objects and so on. But we're going to want to go ahead and add another tile or another layer that's going to be your tile map, which will allow you to draw some platforms for your character to work on. We're going to go ahead and add another layer too for adding a, a character to work with. I'm going to double click that layer and label it as character. Giving everything a good label makes it a little bit more organized and easier to follow when you're working on it and you're making your game larger and larger. Now I'm going to click on the tile map and I can see that there's a grid that allows me to draw. What I want to do now though is I want to go in and make use of the marketplace. And if you click on the icon over here on the left, you're going to see that the marketplace contains all these packs that give you starting graphics and so on. The one we're going to use today is this classic pack, uh, the Game Fruit Classic pack, if you click on it, you'll see that it gives you a quick preview. So all the packs come with a little bit of a preview, it shows you all the, all the objects that you have access to. One of the most important things to look for though is which pack comes with scripts. Scripts are programming instructions, so it's programming language um, utilizing the block programming way of building code. You're going to add that to your game and you'll start to see it load up here over on the left. And once it's all loaded up, they'll be organized in terrain brushes and miscellaneous, all your NPCs, which are non-player characters. And also you'll notice that there's little blue triangles, or excuse me, lightning bolts next to the objects. And those lightning bolts mean that there's a script attached to the object, which means there's a programming code attached to the graphic, which is going to make it do something. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw some terrain that are character can walk on and I'm going to go ahead and utilize this rock right here. I'm going to click on my pointer from my mouse pointer and I'm going to click on these stones and I'm just going to draw these out and you can see that you can build a pretty cool sideways scrolling type terrain and now once you have that on there you can go ahead and notice that this particular pack comes with a player. So I'm going to click on my player layer. That's real important that you get off of the grid. You don't want to add a player character when the grid tile is showing. Click on your player. Once again, I'll click on my pointer. I'll click on my player. And there he is. I can place him anywhere I like. Good point right about there. And you'll notice this little icon here. This means that there's a script attached to that object or this character. So that script is going to be allowing him to move left, right, jump, and so on. So at this point, you actually have some really, really cool work done. So click play. When you click play, you're going to notice that Game Fruit will go out and build out the game for you. And now using your keyboard, you have this little guy here moving across your screen in a sideways scroller kind of way. All right, not too bad. Pretty neat, actually, when you think about it. There's a lot of work actually underlying all this. If we were to uh, click on our character and click on script editor, we could see that, well, nothing is showing. These are blocks that would control that character. And we'll, we'll, just, we'll kind of delve into that in a later tutorial. I'm going to go back here, click on level editor, and it brings me back right in. One of the things you could add to your character right now is some kind of non-player character. I'm going to go ahead and add in, I think, this zombie-looking guy. And I'll put him over here. Notice once again, he too has a script associated with him. I'm going to click on play. Game Fruit builds out the game for us. And then using our character or our keyboard, once the zombie senses us, we have to get moving. <clears throat> click on edit. And it brings me right back to my level editor. The last thing I could show you to add that's very easy is some kind of weapon. Now in this particular game pack, 
the weapon that's available to us appears to be this rifle of sorts and I'll put this right about there now if you want that weapon to actually fire a round of sort with a bullet click on bullet now one of the things you want to do is you could place the bullet anywhere on the level and as long as it's on that level anywhere the weapon will fire so now game fruit builds the game and we get to the point where we can begin grab our weapon zombie senses us oh and he got rid of us this time we could attack the zombie and he's battling away so in this tutorial we just showed you real quickly how you can actually add layers that will contain your character your tile map which will allow you to build out your your uh, platform adding an object that's already in the game pack and adding a non-player object and even a weapon.